Okay. This may be recorded. Great. Um, Bruce, do you want to go? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, Bruce Budrick, Director of Facilities at Amherst Housing Authority. Um, been here for a few months, so I'm jumping into this project, you know, midstream a little bit, but, uh, you know, see, I think we're picking it right up, and uh, Chad did a lot of the legwork for us before I came along, and um, learning as we go and trying to make sure we uh, take care of everything that needs to be taken care of. I'm, I'm Josh from Diversified Construction. We're the general contractor. And I'm Gus, a domain project manager. Linda Overing, I'm the wage consultant for the town of Amherst. I think Jared Gost is also here. He's and install the siding. And so is Jared with is Jared with Diversified or is he a subcontractor? He's a subcontractor. All right. And so yeah, Roy's the architect. Roy, sometimes you cut out. I don't know if you're feeling closer if we can hear you better, but sometimes I feel like there's a little difficulty hearing you. Um, so I guess uh, and there's Pamela Rogers, the executive director of the Amherst Housing Authority, who may join us. She's not here right now. Um, so, Josh, is there are there other subs on the job, or is it just the one? We might have a little bit of electrical work to do to remove things, but other than that, no. So, what's it, Jared's company? My name, name. is Jagos Construction. Is the company name? Okay. I'm the uh, hundred percent owner. Actually, this one, this is first response, actually. I'm sorry. I have two different companies. This one's um, under first response. So you uh, first response, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm the owner and I'll be there uh, at all times throughout the whole project. I'll be there, uh, the one in calling the siding as well. All right, yeah, that's important. Just, you know, Linda needs to interview every trade. Um, maybe we could have Linda go since that also informs some other things unless Ben, you know, is there something else we want to walk through? Um, just general scope of work, I guess. Well, actually it's helpful for me to hear some of that. Then my right. stick is more sure. pertinent. Okay. All right. So Bruce, I don't know if you want to describe the project and what, where we landed with everything. Yeah, um, sure. Um, Watson farms, um, siding and, uh, and actually roof. So the whole building envelope, uh, is in need of some repair. Um, we hope to hop under the roof uh, next, uh, but for the siding, um, quite a bit of the siding was just falling off all around the building and uh, just in pretty bad shape. And so we have a project to, uh, you know, replace it all. That's going to be um, removing, of course, all the siding, uh, repairing any damage, water damage underneath, because it seems like there was a period of time where the siding was off and water was able to just penetrate, you know, to the sheathing underneath. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be some repairs, you know, and that's why it's included in the spec. And um, I did have a, a, a federal REAC inspection um, in April. So what I did is uh, in order to pass the inspection, I, I went ahead and had some siding work done temporarily. It was, it was killing me to put <laughs> thousands of dollars into something that I'm going to replace anyway. But you'll see that there was, there was, um, what we did is use some hardy board. It's not an exact match, but it, it, it's, it's around the project here and there just to, to uh, button up the areas that was falling off completely. Um, so uh, um, that, that's about it. We want to get it all, all replaced and um, buttoned up so we have a good building envelope. So could we back up for my benefit? Because I always think of Watson Farms as the, it, there's like two distinct kind of developments on that property. The, the newer building that's right by the entrance and then the smaller buildings. Oh, Which ones are we working on? Sure. So not the ones right by the entrance. Um, not the, the new ones. 
not not the new ones. <laughs> we don't we don't we don't manage that. Um, so once you okay. pass that, go past the dumpster, the ones further back. And it also includes building 15 is the or unit 15 is the one all the way down. It's almost accessed from the other street from east. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, you cannot access it, like drive up to it from that way. There's a walkway you could get to, but uh, but that's mm -hmm. a single unit there and that's included. in. in so it's really multiple buildings. Yeah. So this is so for Linda, you know, for everyone, you know, if you come off Main Street here, I'll just back up. Yeah, you know, there's Watson Farms Drive. So this this building here, is and the, then the um, you know, that's Main Street housing, which is not part of Watson Farms. So we're looking back now, and if you you know go to the left, here's another new building, still part we call it Main Street housing, and Watson Farms is all these single story, like one and a half story. Um, I guess there's like two story uh, buildings back here. So, so there's, you know, there's more than one building, right, in Watson Farms. Is there six buildings? So we're doing all six. Yeah. So it's all all these okay. buildings here. Yep. And, okay. and the sheds aren't being touched, are they? We, well, we're not touching the sheds because the budgets, you know, have gotten so high. So we're we're gonna dress up the sheds with my own team, right. my own uh, workers. We're gonna, you know, try to clean them up a little bit, make them look nice because right. we don't want them to be an eyesore after everything else is all pretty. And the last building, 15, you mentioned, is this one back here, right, Bruce? At the one that's in the back, too. Yeah, that that don't look like it because it's not a two-story. So I don't know if you can go any further around the corner. Can you still drive up the road? Yeah. No, I'm familiar with the site. Yeah, I got that, yeah. Bruce was yeah. using the word building as a singular, oh, and that's oh, okay. where I was getting off yeah. on exactly what's the scope of this. Yeah, yeah looking, so that's yeah. that one you were talking about is further back still. Yeah. Still, um, so still further back. Yeah. Okay, is it? Yep. Wow. Yep. Keep going. And you'll see it through that walkway. See the walkway there? It's oh, that yeah, one yeah, off yeah. to the distance. And then you see that car in the driveway. Right. Oh, so wow. that one too. Okay. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So, so that building's looking, included. If we're looking at this building, you're not, I mean, you're taking off window trim and door trim um, and everything, but you're not touching the actual window or, or doors, right? Correct. And then what about like up, up here, like on, under the roof? Are you just kind of just doing the up to the fascia or something or the just the trim up there no soften or anything yeah now roy was the um was the drip edge included i thought the drip edge was part of it no no that'll go with the roof okay and no lead in this right it's all it's already by yeah, it's all right. We're not touching any blood. Great. Yeah. And there's no relocation or anything either. So all the tenants can remain. Yeah. All right. I can stop my share then, unless. That was handy, though. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize Google Street View went in there. Poor person probably thought it was a through road and then realized they had to turn around. <laughs> at, the very, at the very end. <laughs> and then um, do we have a length of uh, an expected time for how long this would take if, you know, it's like. I don't remember. I'm, I'm hoping two to two and a half months total. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, once you have to, we still have to, like, you know, uh, staff met with Roy and Bruce just the other day to talk about this, but materials still have to be ordered and everything. So we're not, I mean, there may be delays until you're yep. actually on the ground. Yes. Yeah. But once you're there, you could say two to three months. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm looking at seeing what the duration for the project is yeah uh, I, yeah i don't know i forget what it said in the uh in the specs but yeah yeah I'm not I might find it while we're talking about. Okay. Sure. 
And so part of being on site, you know, one of the requirements is for the contractor to install a, a, a sign acknowledging the block grant program. And so, um, and then also posting the labor standards and wages. And so that can be on. Sign. Where is the sign in the bidding documents? I remember I couldn't find it the other day. I think Ben may have just emailed it at the end of his PDF. Um, so we didn't have it. Page two of the PDF. Yeah, I saw what he sent over. I just didn't put any money in there to put up a sign. I didn't see any original it bidding documents. It was in the addendum. Oh, it's in the addendum? Okay. Yeah, what are, what are the requirements for this size? Like, is there any requirements for the size and material of the sign, Nate? Or? Um, like a four by eight piece of aluminum. <laughs> no, it can be, we just say a, a laminated piece of paper that's, you know, stapled to a piece of plywood. Um, you know, it does have to be visible. Uh, Linda will take a picture. Um, you know, we, 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 you know, if it's like two by three feet, like, you know, just a, yeah, nothing. Um, I mean, it's just meant to be, last the duration of the project, but okay, as long as we're told when it's up and we can take a nice picture of it, that satisfies our requirements. So it is something that the you know the block rent program really wants to know that you know the sign and the the labor standards and everything have been posted on the job. Okay, yeah, we can make we'll put the labor standards or whatever probably in the trailer or something. Is that, is that well, good? no. Probably the labor standards okay, but the wage rates have to be at a place where the workers can go without you seeing them. There yeah. That's why we like to put them on the back of the sign. If you oh, just okay. put them in like a plastic envelope or something and then throw them in and there and just staple it to the back. Because yep. theoretically they shouldn't need to, you know, be in a space where they can be observed looking at them. Okay. It'd be better. Great. So yeah, this sign is in, uh, it's on page two of that packet I sent out. If you want, I can uh, get it to you again if, if you're happy no, to I have, find it. I have that. I just couldn't find it in the original thing. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Do we want to jump into wage rates and labor standards in that conversation? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so are you, there were two, um, wage decisions in your contract and you're responsible, the, 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 uh, the contractor record is going to be responsible ultimately for compliance. So diversified, you know, you're yep. going to be responsible, um, and they should determine what the, the wage rate is by which you ever one is higher. Um, so there's a different wage rate for carpenters pick the higher of the two. And, um, you know, this, with the state, there are changes. So watch those. Um, yep. On the federal side, there are um, some mandatory vacation. It depends on the trade. You may not hit any of those, but trades that are more likely to have unions, they do have days. So if you run into, this job runs into Labor Day and you're in one of those trades, you're gonna provide anybody who was on site that week who fits that category needs to get a paid day off. Okay. Um, collecting proof of that. If um, if you use any apprentices, the, you can only you pay the apprentice wage if you're that part of a bona fide, you know, state or federally approved apprentice program. You just can't call somebody an apprentice and then okay the wage rate. We have to have the backup. Um, wages should be submitted to weekly um, in past authority, housing authority projects. The housing authority has liked to, as the owner, collect the original submissions. And then the, we found the, uh, the best process is to send an electronic copy of that to me. And then I will be on top of where we're at because when the, your pay rec comes to Amherst to be paid, Nader Ben is going to send me an email and ask me what the status of your payroll submissions are. And I, I, I he, they will hold that payment <laughs> until yeah. we're either current or in pretty good shape. 
Um, and so I don't, if, you, if these just go straight to the housing authority, our, my experience has been, they don't make it to me on a very timely basis. So just CC me an electronic copy, it's in the original. Um, Bruce, maybe you can talk with Pam and see where she wants us to go, whether it's her office or to you or whatever. Uh, I just know I, I there's a I sent out the my little cheat sheet on this process uh, earlier today, and that's got my email address on it. You can just email them straight to us. You okay. need OSHA cards now. I will say that sometimes you know, sole proprietors are subject to prevailing wage for any of their employees. So if you're the only employee, Jared, on site that week, you just put down you're the owner. But if you, you're, any of your empl employees are still subject to it, and so you'd have to provide, you know, pay them prevailing wage. Um, yep. OSHA, yeah, OSHA cards for anybody on site. Um, the, I noticed that the, the form that is in your contract, you have to report on the federal pay, rate reporting form. Uh, I think since the, maybe the package was put together, there's a new version of that that's out. It's got a new, because that one said expired 2018. So if you look at my little cheat sheet, there's a link to the web and that'll give you the current version that you should be using for this. So can you give me an idea what kind of trades you might expecting to have on site? Uh, it's just gonna be carpentry. Carpentry, any laborers? Did you say that? carpentry? What about the roofers? That's a different category. No, no roofing is happening. That's a no no roofing. project oh. for later. Oh, that roofing. Okay, someone said roofing at the beginning. Yeah, I'm sorry. I did. I did. We're, we're going to be tackling that next. <laughs> oh, okay. Came out. All right. It's just siding. And maybe an electrician, right? Maybe. Right. Maybe. Okay. Um, so uh, the state um, has been telling us uh, that they want us to do multiple interviews, you know, kind of toward the beginning of the project, halfway through and toward the end. So I may have to come more than once trying to catch these folks, different people. So I guess just keeping me in the loop as far as schedule would be really helpful. If just carpenters, it'll be a dream. But um, like if electric, you do get an electrician, I really need to know that they're coming. Okay. They'll have to have an interview. They don't like us doing them over the phone. Um, yeah, we like to say that uh, from the, the funder end of this, this, that side of the state, um, they, they can't come out and look at the project and say, that's a lovely job. They don't have that expertise. So they spend their time nitpicking the paperwork. And that includes this payroll stuff. And they just get into the weeds on it. And so I have to pass that tough love on to you guys. I apologize for that in advance, but I have to be really picky because um, it keeps the town of Amherst in good, good uh, graces with the funder. I think so, we did this with you on a project with Taylor Davis over on- uh, Yes, you did. Yep, yep. yep. So you guys, I know, I know we got into a flow and it went really well, um, but yeah. So, I mean, please pass that uh, little handout along to whoever does your payrolls. Yep. So, because, um, <laughs> wonderful. Okay. Yeah, Linda's great. She don't she? She looks nice, but she's really tough. So that's why we use her. Um, <laughs> no, she's no, she's really good, and uh, it is something that the state. Um, I mean, they really spend a lot of time monitoring the wages. It's it's ironic, um, in terms of you know what they look at, but wages are really important. Um, so we thank Linda and you for all the help and cooperation, because um, it's something that you know. If it if there is a problem, we want to make sure we we resolve it before the project's complete. You know, we don't want that the state to find it after the fact and then have to come chase everyone um, later. I think that's it for me. All right, and then I guess you know Linda mentioned apprentices, but there is no. Are there any new hires or apprentices on this job or any anything that's happening? No. That's probably for Jared, but I don't think so. Correct. Yeah. All right. That makes it a little easier. Um, and then, you know, for reporting, the, the we have to submit quarterly reports. So uh, the calendar quarter, um, they're due, um, you know, say like, you know, 
So the first quarter of the year, it's due uh, in April, April 15th. We ask the housing authority to send the town something by April 10th. We have to in turn submit it by the 15th to the state. And so, you know, typically we base it on payrolls, but also we need images of the project. And, you know, sometimes Josh, you may ask the contractor just to, um, you know, um, clarify what's been done or what's remaining. And so, you know, this is our chance just to also say that everything's going according to plan. But if it isn't, you know, for instance, say we order material and it's back ordered, you know, we want to be upfront with, with our funders because we could get an extension of the grant or things. So, you know, if there is, if there are issues, I'm assuming we'll hear from Bruce or Roy as well, but you know, it's a, it's a chance to just provide an update and be honest. I mean, I think in the past people try to sugarcoat these quarterly reports and then you at the end of the project, you'd say, oh, but, you know, there's actually a problem and we need a year extension. And they'd say, well, wow, you know, the last few reports have been really fine. And so, I, you know, I think we still want to make it look nice. But, um, you know, if there is, you know, if there are issues or something, right, if it ends up being a really rainy summer and you just can't get on site, I mean, you know, things that are unexpected, it's great to, you know, have us be aware of that. <laughs> Um, you know, we can say we went over the wage and labor standards. Uh, there's this, you know, in the pack, we have a civil rights and equal opportunity thing. So I, I think in the bid documents there are a number of forms that need to be signed as part of the contract, um, state and block grant forms. Um, and so I haven't, I, you know, um, those go over all those saying that, you know, you will, you know, if you have hiring goals, you know, this is what you'd need for the project, which doesn't sound like it's an issue. Um, you know, you have to post the labor standards on the site and have affirmative practices. Um, um, which again, seems like that's all set. You know, Linda did mention OSHA cards. So that can be, those can be emailed. So any, you know, I think whoever was sent uh, an email for the pre-construction meeting, it's good if that just becomes an email chain, if there's questions or OSHA cards or other things. It keeps everyone in the loop. I'm just going through the 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 the, the, thing, the PDF that Ben sent out. Um, I don't really have any other any other immediate comments. Um, you know, the contractor will still have to, uh, or the housing authority. You know, we still need building permits from the town, or any other permitting will go through the town. So we're not, um, you know, that's not we're not waiving any of those requirements. So if there is you know, building permit that's needed or anything else. I haven't um, filled in. I haven't, yeah. I haven't submitted yet, but it's all filled up. All right. And, um, you know, for staging and material, I'm assuming, Bruce, that you've coordinated all that and like parking, you know, there isn't, you know, any impact to, you know, like we, a public right of way or anything or. We should talk about it at some point. I'm going to have to have a Connex box there somewhere. So. Yeah. Is it possible we, we meet you on site sometime for that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I don't know. I think I think that I, I don't know. I think we've covered everything we might need to. So a sense of what's the idea of when this might start? Um I mean probably I don't have my schedule in front of us, but you know, what were you thinking? August sometime, maybe September, depending on lead times. I still have to get approvals um, on some of those and find lead times are. So that's probably going to be the biggest. I mean, could we say, I mean, yeah, I mean, if we said September 1 and we think, you know, three months, you know, I'm glad that that's done this season. Um, it's not going to carry over. We're hoping to get it done this season. So, mm. like I said, I just once I get, I'll send the submittals to Roy either today or Monday. And once I get lead times, I can give you a, a good answer right now. Just be kind of mm -hmm. making stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you never know. Like sometimes, you know, they'll tell me two weeks, sometimes it could be 20. Right. So, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up or crush anybody's hopes <laughs> today. I'm assuming you're going to go one building at a time, or are you, or are you going to? Me and Jared talked about that a little bit, but yeah, I think, you know, we'll be finishing up one and starting the next, right. but yeah. one at a time, yeah. Don't yeah, forget, so... the big thing right now is materials coming in. I mean, um, 
they can say they're going to be in first of September and we can say go. But what I've been doing is waiting until they're actually shipped and on the ground and at the, the supply store, then saying go. There's, there's a big problem with that right now. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say, Josh? Yeah, I agree. Uh, like even sometimes you get material and it's like broken or wrong. Right. Or... Yep. It's been interesting. Right. I'd rather 100% of the time the ground and the roll rather uh, base it off of when they say it's going to be. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's good to know just the scheduling as we get closer, especially for Linda, since she has to have job interviews with the trades. It's, you know, if there's, you know, if someone's in, you know, if an electrician is needed, they're only there for an hour one day. Um, yeah. You know, it, we really have to coordinate that. So, you know, if it's, you know, if you're going sequentially by building by building, you know, maybe, you know, Linda, if you can't make one time, maybe there's another time or, you know, I've right. done interviews too and the, people don't like me as much, but um <laughs> you know, there's a way we have to get it done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll try to whatever. Maybe we'll see how it goes. I don't know if he's right. gonna try to do more than one service mm -hmm. reconnect or whatever he has to do there. Right. You know, the, there's an order of conditions on the agenda. Is is that for real? Yeah, I, was gonna ask, that, I don't. Or is that just left over from a previous project where there was site work? I was gonna say there's no site work associated with this, is there? No. Uh, no. No, I think when we did the they did the Watson Farms paving, there was an order of conditions, but I don't yeah. think we needed it for the siding until Good. October. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Because yeah. there could be a whole another holdup. <laughs> yeah. No, I I don't yeah. That's not okay. I don't think that's relevant to this. Yeah. Okay. Just to make sure. <laughs> um all right. I think we've, I, I feel like we've covered everything. I don't know if there's any other questions or. I don't think so. Yeah, all good, I think. Yeah, and so I guess, you know, after this, you know, as part of the the block rent requirement and maybe from DHTD, you know, there, there'll be a notice um, to proceed and that becomes kind of like the official start to the contract. And so that will have time of performance and the wage decisions. Um, and you know have a an estimated start date which could be you know next week for instance but you know as soon as we get the letter out it'll, it'll be available to start so um and then you know i guess like you said there's submittals and other things that would go to roy and bruce but from our end you know we have a notice to proceed and then it's just a matter of just staying in contact when you know things are actually happening um and so you know we'd like to be involved with you know a job site meeting at first uh, maybe the first two and if everything is going smooth you know ben and i from the town don't necessarily have to be there but just as the project starts we'd like to be involved with that and then um you know see that the signs and everything else are posted uh, and after that we don't you know we're not as involved you know we can just be coordinating through roy and bruce but. and as far as uh, meeting over there josh and um is it jared um is that who would be meeting to work out logistics? Let me know. I think I'm, I'm on the email chain. You have my contact info and we can pick a date when you want to go over there and take a look at it and work out the logistics. Sounds good. Um, I'll, I'll get the submittals in and we'll get that organized and then maybe me and Jerry can find a day we can meet you over there and, and coordinate that. Okay. All right. Linda, do you have any more questions? Or are you are you feeling all right? Okay, great. Thank you. All right, Roy, you all set too? Yes, sir. Great. All right, well, thanks everyone. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye -bye.